What's going on YouTube and welcome back to Gold Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah, it's been a rough season for the Penguins and their fans this year as once again we're hearing a similar story to what we've heard really over the last couple years up there in Pittsburgh. And the fact that Sidney Crosby is doing everything he possibly can to keep this team competitive, keep this team relevant. The reality is last year, that was a back breaking loss. Losing Jake Gensel, the inability to re-sign him. People are starting to see what the writing on the wall is for Pittsburgh. And for a guy like Jake Gensel, that's kind of the most prime example of where this thing inevitably was going to go for Pittsburgh, as much as maybe they wanted to hide it, you know, we know the reality is, you know, Crosby, Malkin, Latang, they're in the twilights of their career. And this is not the same Penguins team that we saw in the mid 2010s and late, you know, 2015, 16, 17 Penguins, right? And um, we're starting to really see the the struggles in between the pipes goaltending has been a big issue for this team early on and maybe some of the guys that we were hoping that would kind of turn things around there in Pittsburgh over the last couple years some of the acquisitions they've made like Ricard Raquel who's actually done okay this season Michael Bunting um, probably a better example Michael Bunting Eric Carlson those guys just aren't panning out the way that I think the Penguins would have hoped when they acquired them and it's catching up to them and in a very competitive not only competitive metropolitan division but we're seeing the atlantic division teams like detroit buffalo um ottawa those teams are making things even more difficult and really kind of pulling that you know pushing that vice in more for the pittsburgh penguins on just how competitive this division is and um you know for pittsburgh in those t in that tier of mid teams in the atlantic and the metro right now in the east pittsburgh's definitely on the lower end of those teams and we can look at some of their scores here. I just did a video on Montreal. I'll make sure at the end of this video uh, to check that out as well. But I talked about, like, it's not the fact that they're losing. Because, yeah, the losing sucks. It's the way that they're losing is so frustrating. And you could be halfway through the game and know Pittsburgh's losing some of these games. Looking at some of the most notable games, I mean, it, we knew right from the start. Game one against the Rangers, their home opener against one of their big rivals in the New York Rangers they lose six to nothing like that is a backbreaker right away to start the season they lose a couple more games kind of ugly a six to three loss to the Jets the Jets have been good this season but that's a that's a pretty ugly loss a four nothing loss to the Oilers a five to three loss to the Wild and then we have a couple a little bit kind of gruesome ones here in the month of November five to one loss against the Carolina Hurricanes, and then a 7-1 loss against the Dallas Stars, and then a 6-2 loss against the Columbus Blue Jackets. So the ugly losses have been getting worse and worse over the last couple of weeks in Pittsburgh. And not only are, you know, because earlier on in the season, like, they were scoring six goals. They were scoring three or four goals a game, and they were able to keep things tight in those games. And, you know, I was able to go to the game against the Islanders, and at least they were, like, they were playing pretty well in that game and they were able to score or on the few opportunities the Islanders gave them. They did score on them. They scored three, but they gave up, well, technically four because it ended in a shootout, but they gave up three. And in the reality of that game, they were up 3-1 in the third period against an Islanders team that very much struggles to score goals. There was no excuse for the Penguins to give up that kind of game, but they did. And I think that's really kind of the glaring example of of some of these losses for the Penguins where you're just looking like, oh my God, like th this is not good. So now that we're seeing their record, we're seeing the losses pile up, right? Their goals for 18th in the league, below league average, and their goals against, just to put in perspective, 32 teams in the National Hockey League. They are 32nd for goals against this season. They have given up the most goals in the a team for this season around the entire National Hockey League, they are number one in the wrong category, in the worst possible way. 77 goals given up this season. And like I said, a lot of that contributes to the defense and the goaltending. Tristan Jari playing with the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins. That wasn't on the bingo card to start the season, I think, for a lot of people. Obviously, it doesn't help. They have some injuries. They've lost some depth like Blake Lazat, Kevin Hayes, Cody Glass. 
and then Chris Letang, who is obviously a bigger piece of this team. Losing all those guys definitely doesn't help. But there is, even with a fully healthy roster, Pittsburgh doesn't look like a team that you really think is going to win much of anything. I hate to say that, but I think Penguins fans have, have kind of come to terms with that. Um, last week, there was a lot of discussion. We started to see actual fireworks going off in Pittsburgh. A lot of it was rumors for a little while. And then we saw the Lars Eller trade, where Lars Eller gets sent to the Crosstown rival in the Washington Capitals who have taken off this season. I thought they were maybe going to start a rebuild alongside here at Pittsburgh, but they seem to be coming along quite nicely and a quick transition for the Caps in what looked like maybe the end of their era there with Ovechkin and Backstrom. Now, all of a sudden, they look like a resurge team that could maybe win the Metropolitan Division this year if their cards play correctly against Carolina and the Rangers and the Devils. They are right there at the top four in the Metropolitan Division. And for Pittsburgh, they're kind of looking at this and making that move, trading Lars Eller as maybe the warning shot for the rest of the league. Like, hey, we're open for moves. We're open for trade here. I think that's definitely possible. Um, there was a lot of dispute last week about Eric Carlson, the fact he was coming out to the media saying he's been playing well and things like that. And apparently some of the, the management and ownership wasn't too thrilled with that. They weren't thrilled that Carlson was coming out saying how he's playing well and things just aren't going their way. And, and I think that frustrated the Penguins fan base a little bit too, because it's like, listen, like you're not playing that well. And you, you look at his numbers and it's kind of hard to deny that. I mean one of those things where when you talk about a guy when you talk about a guy with his kind of aura right when we're talking about Eric Carlson he's a minus eight this season 10 points in 19 games that's basically a point every other night for a guy like Carlson's stature like that's not gonna cut it and we're seeing right now for a Pittsburgh Penguins team that needs everybody at the top to be on their game like Carlson Latang. Malkin, Crosby, when you don't have those guys playing well, it is really difficult to overcome. And Raquel is right there too. He's playing all right. He's got 11 points this season. But again, it's not enough. They need more scoring on this team and they're just not getting it. And Brian Rust is not the same player he was. He's a minus 11 this season. He's got six points on the year. Most of those points coming on the power play. He's got two power play goals. It's been rough for Pittsburgh, right? And, um... You know, we knew that things were going to be rough for the Penguins this season, but we didn't think it would be this bad this early. And I just talked about Montreal in a similar vein, but, you know, like, I think it's setting in for a lot of people, not even in Pittsburgh, outside of Pittsburgh as well. We very likely have seen not only the core three in Latang, Crosby, and Malkin playing in their last playoff game ever as a member of the Penguins, we have very likely seen the last time Crosby even playing in the Stanley Cup playoffs. And um, that's tough. And even as an Islander fan who for years has dreaded seeing Crosby make the playoffs, as a fan of an as a fan of the NHL, not having players like Sidney Crosby in the playoffs is a net negative for the for not only the league, but for the brand. And for Pittsburgh there's a very likely chance that they're going at a guy from Long Island, New York at the first overall pick next June. That's the hope because as we're starting to see, Crosby by himself isn't going to cut this. It's not going to work. And maybe they don't get the first overall pick, but they are definitely going to be a team. I would say at this point, the writing is on the wall. Like there's not much more you can do here. There's been a lot of talk about other than guys like Carlson getting traded. Malkin's name could be brought back into the conversation. He just had 700 points or 700 goals, I think. 700 goals or points in Pittsburgh. That obviously was an emotional thing. You know, do they consider trading Crosby? I think Crosby, by signing that extension a couple years ago, I just don't see that happening. I don't see Crosby anytime soon leaving this organization. Uh, Mike Sullivan potentially seeing the door. I, I think it would have to be similar. Like Crosby and Sullivan would probably both have to go out the door together if that were to happen because Crosby has such a good relationship with Mike Sullivan. And until Sullivan loses the core message in that room and loses the belief from those guys, until that happens, 
I just don't think it's going to happen because he is such a good coach. And the reality is there's decent coaches around the league that are available, but are any as good as Mike Sullivan? Sullivan would get picked up in a heartbeat by anybody around the league if he was available. So let me know what you guys think down below. What do you guys think of the Pittsburgh Penguins? It's rough. And, I, and I'd and i love to say, like, I think a lot of people want to hope that maybe they go out and get get a guy like John Gibson from Anaheim. I think they've tried that already. The asking price is too high. And maybe with Lucas Dostal playing the way he is right now in Anaheim, maybe they're looking at it like maybe we get a little less value for him because we just want to do what's best for him and for us. Like, we move on from him. He gets more minutes playing in Pittsburgh. And maybe they come to that agreement. But I think Pittsburgh is definitely looking at it more at this point, like trading Lars Eller away. We might see a guy like Drew O'Connor. Marcus Pedersen's name has been thrown out there. He could be a top defenseman that's available as his contract's concluding. And we're seeing a lot of the defensemen available, like Gavrikov, potentially staying in L.A. We're seeing a lot of the defensemen that could have been in the market next summer, kind of that market drying up very quickly. Marcus Pedersen's name is going to get thrown out there more. So maybe Pittsburgh gets some value for him. Same thing for Drew O'Connor. But I want to know what you guys think down below. Would, would you like to see Pittsburgh get in return for some of these guys? Because it looks like Pittsburgh wants to get younger players that are almost ready, like a Rutger McGrory, more so than getting more draft picks. Because I think that's a reality that Pittsburgh wants to turn things around fairly quickly here and get these guys ready for next season. They've got young developing prospects that, for better or for worse, could be better or worse players like Samuel Poulin, Rutger McGrory, right? Um... Owen Pickering hopefully soon like we're going to start to see those guys coming up in Pittsburgh but you want to add more beyond that and if they're able to trade guys like O'Connor and Pedersen try and get as much value as you can for those guys so let me know what you guys think down below as always thank you so much for watching this video I will see you again next time peace out